Hi, grade three. Here's chapter 13 of Box of Shocks. Mrs. Franzen sends a letter home to our parents explaining our new assignment. Mom and Dad are all excited about it. How wonderful, such a creative project, said Mom. You really have to put your imagination to work. They can't stop going on and on about what Bubbles might be thinking and what I could say about his life. I'm tempted to ask them to come to school and do the presentation for me. Will they babble on and on about the assignment? I'm thinking about something else. A plan is slowly unfolding in my mind, so I say to Dad, after school tomorrow, can we go to Grandpa Golly's place? I haven't been there for a while, and I figure it's time that I check in and see if he needs any help with the animals. Why, that's very thoughtful of you, Oliver, said Dad. You're absolutely right. We haven't checked in on him for a while. Plus, he might be able to give you help with your assignment. Yeah, right. That's exactly what I was thinking, I say. The next day, about two minutes after we arrive, Grandpa Golly puts me to work shoveling dog poop in the backyard. Well, Dad carries a few giant bags of pet food in from the garage and then cleans out some of the bird cages. When Dad finishes helping Grandpa Golly, he calls from the back door. How's it going out there, Ollie? I'm pretty much done, I say, as I carry about the hundredth shovel full of dog poop across the yard and dump it into the garbage can. Thank you so much, Oliver, said Grandpa Golly. You're such a big help. Dad and I looked at each other and smiled. He and I know it's a different story at home. I'm not the best kid in the world at getting my chores done. But today, Grandpa Golly's, um, but today at Grandpa Golly's, I'm happy to shovel all this dog poop for one special reason. Dad would call it an ulterior motive. As I'm washing my hands in the kitchen sink, I say, can I ask for a small favor, Grandpa? Of course, of course, of course, said Grandpa Golly, slapping me on the back. For all the work you've done for me, how can I refuse a small favor? You better wait to find out what it is before you agree, Dad said with a smile. So, what is a small favor, said Grandpa? Could I please borrow one of your pets tomorrow, just for the day? Is this for your project at school, said Dad? I nod my head, looking down at the floor. I'm hoping to provide as few details as possible so Dad doesn't find out what I'm really up to. Can't you take Bubbles as your pet, said Dad? Don't fish qualify? Well, I say, still staring at the floor, not sure what to say. Luckily, Grandpa Golly bails me out. Perhaps Oliver would like to take a more unusual pet for his project than the plain old fish, he said. Yeah, that's it, I said, looking up and nodding like crazy. How would you like to take my newest addition? It would do him good to get out into the world and experience a little life. Grandpa Golly nodded his head and tugged at his earlobe, a sure sign he's happy with one of his own ideas. He waves me into the living room and the corner hanging from a hook is a large bird cage, perched in the cage as a parrot. Grandpa Golly puts his face right up against the bars of the cage and says, say hello to Oliver. The parrot opens his beak, but nothing comes out. Oh, come on, said Grandpa, you're a parrot. Surely you can say something for Oliver. Again, it, its beak opens, but nothing comes out. This is your, not your average parrot, said Dad. No, nah, I'm afraid not, said Grandpa. I got him for a really good price. The owner of the shop warned me that the birds never said a single word in his life, not even his own name. I'm hoping I can somehow get this bird to, an, to act like a real parrot. It doesn't matter if he can't talk to Mrs. Franson's project. I say, if it's okay with Dad, we can pick him up on our way to school and I'll bring him back at the end of the day. Dad doesn't say anything. He nods and gives me a suspicious glance. I have a feeling that he knows that I'm up to something. See you next time.